So slugs are arable farming's biggest pest. It costs the industry around 100 million pounds every year to control them. And that's a huge problem. And the only thing that we have to control them are molluscicide slug pellets. Now, that's not good for the environment and it's not good for the resilience of farming. But what about slug resistant wheat? At Boffin Farmers, we heard about an old land race wheat variety, Watkins 788, that had never been grown in the UK before. That scientists at the John Innes Centre had put through lab based feeding trials and found it was consistently spurned by slugs. A group of us got together and asked if we could test this wheat for ourselves in on farm trials. So, on the strength of that, John Innes Centre multiplied up over two years enough seed for the trials which went in last autumn. We've maintained that material at the John Innes Centre over the years and the point is that it contains a lot of diversity of many kinds which aren't present in modern wheat. And uh, in that material we think, and it's, it's a difficult trait to, char to characterise and to follow, but we think we've identified resistance to slug damage. But at the moment this is in, first of all it's in a land race, and the problem with land races is then don't look like a wheat that a farmer would grow now. They don't perform well, they fall over, they have other resist susceptibility to other diseases. So what you need to do is identify the genes that can carry the beneficial trait, beneficial characteristic, and then move them into modern wheat. I think of it as retrofitting modern wheat. And uh, we do that with specialized genetic techniques, but before we do that, we just gotta make sure the trait's really there. The reason we're here today is to, to work with farmers organised within Boffin, say, do we really see slug resistance in this, this land race which came, yeah, was collected in Central Asia in the early 20th century? The thing about a slug trial is there's lots of variables. You're relying on a natural pest which clusters in the field. So the types of experiments are very different. And it turned out that on-farm trials seem to be the ideal way of doing it. If it goes the way that I expect it to go, first of all, we need to get lucky and the trait is real and if it is then that is where plant breeders would come into the picture much more as academics we'd be able to say here's the gene here's the the markers for it breeders have one perspective on the on the world of wheat farmers have another and it's great to just to kind of tap into that enthusiasm and those needs and say now we're working with the farmers together and the breeders so it's hopefully the so you know the whole is greater than the sum of the parts in that in that way so the trial design of the actual plots had to be absolutely right. They had to be the right size, we had to have the right replication to ensure we had statistically significant results. And they had to be practical so that farmers could establish the plots with their own equipment. Each of us chose the most slug infested part of our field in the most slug infested field of the farm to really put these wheats to the test. And then we established the plots and then we monitored them twice weekly for about eight weeks afterwards, making sure that we put down slug refuse traps so that we could record any slugs that we found. And we also recorded the crop condition and we used an app on a mobile phone from Husk Data um, to record them. So the advice of Keith Walters was absolutely key in making sure that we came up with the right design. What Boffin does is supercharge that because the farmers now in the Boffin group actually manage to take the data themselves. And so my role is largely to discuss the design of the work and to analyse the results for them. We've set up a trial which the farmers have delivered entirely for us and we found then that unfortunately one of the problems we met with was that 2022 autumn had very, very low slug numbers. Various other factors have enabled us to convince ourselves or have produced convincing evidence that the farmers do as good a job as anybody else with that. And isn't that great? Because that means that the farmers have even more involvement and they can keep us on track as much as we're keeping them on track. So we're very grateful to Environment Agency for supporting the trial. I mean, as farmers, we probably would have gone ahead and done the trial anyway, because we're very, very interested in this. But what the funding enabled us to do was apply the proper scientific rigour to the trial that we were so keen to make sure it had. And it also allowed us to do some more feeding trials at the John Innes Centre in Sectary. 
we are going to, to run lab uh, experiments with the slugs. So uh, the idea is that we will be running um, control experiments uh, to see what varieties of wheat are more uh, palatable to the, to the slugs. The numbers we are, we are getting won't be probably enough to do the kind of screening we want to do. Just to put things in perspective, uh, usually we need to use around three slugs per experiment. And given, uh, uh, considering that we want to run, uh, to screen hundreds of, of lines, so that means that you need hundreds to thousands of slugs to run all the experiments we want to do. So we're asking people to get involved as slug scouts and capture slugs to send them into Victor and the team for the feeding trials. Anyone can be a slug scout, but what we need are grey field slugs. And every scout gets a special pack, which includes postage page returns envelopes to send in your slugs, plastic containers with lids to contain your slug batches, a pair of tweezers to help pick up the slimy pests, start a portion of chicken layers mash to bait your slimery where you trap your slugs, Slug Scout guidance notes, a boffin badge to demonstrate to others the remarkable contribution you make to science, a boffin leaflet to inspire you into a world of jaw-dropping wonder, and a boffin pen to help you record your flashes of brilliance. So the feeding trials are a really important element of the work that we're doing on this project. Um, we've also got about 80 recombinant inbred lines. So these are lines that have been crossed into Paragon, which is a more modern wheat, to see which ones of those have inherited that trait. Um, we're also uh, testing some things that some of the people involved in the project, some of the farmers involved in the project, have asked for. So that includes actually looking at the seed versus the shoot. Is it the seed or is it the shoot that slugs are particularly fond of? So, of course, the, the problem with the trial is that we're no closer to finding out whether we have slug resistant wheat. So does that mean the trial's a failure? Well, absolutely not. And there are three key things that were really important about this trial. Firstly, the trial would never have taken place if it hadn't been for the interest of farmers. That research would probably be languishing somewhere um, and no one would have taken it up if farmers hadn't shown an interest and really wanted to put this wheat to the test. The second important aspect about this is that we did a proper scientific trial up to the publishable standard that you would expect from a professional trials technician. And third, we have learned so much about slug feeding behavior and also about how beneficials behave in the field as well. And that is important. There may never be a slug resistant wheat, but the, the information and the knowledge that we're gathering and that we can share with others will really help move on how we control slugs and how we can stop our dependency on this single chemical form of slug control.